Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, I am going to talk about the use of tuple. In the previous videos, we have used the OPL data structure range, set, and array. And using these uh, OPL data structure, we saw the linear as well as the programming problem. But in this particular video, we are going to discuss how we can use the OPL data structure tuple. And by using the tuple, how we can solve the linear programming problem. So the difference between tuple and array is so we can store different types of the data in the tuple and then we can access that particular data types. Like in array, we can only store the float type or you can say the integer type variable values of the variable. Or you can say we can store the particular data. But in tuple, we can store different types of the data like we can store string type we can store in teacher type we can store flow type and then after defining this we can access that particular data as well so how we can do that so let's uh, discuss this thing using a linear programming example and the example i am going to use is that is the blending pro problem again uh, so the blending problem which we are going to solve is so we have three types of gasoline that is super regular and diesel and in order to produce these three types of gasoline we are using three types of crude oils crude one crude two and crude oil three okay and uh, regarding this we have uh, uh, some data that is regarding so each type of gasoline what is the selling price for each type of crude oil what is the purchase price okay so this kind of information we are using Further, we have given the information regarding obtain and lead type of the data in the blending perspective. That is basically in each gasoline type, what kind of obtain rating we needed, okay, what type of lead content there should be. Okay, so in a crude oil that is indicating that obtain rating of all the crude oil must be greater than or equal to each type of gasoline. So we will discuss how we use this type of data type. Similarly, in a lead content, that is that lead content uh, must be less than in each gasoline type. Okay. The further we have given the, the information regarding the demand, that is basically uh, uh, they are saying that the customer demand for uh, super is three thousand barrel per day. For regular, we have two thousand. For diesel, we have one thousand. Similarly, further we have given the information regarding the purchase, like that is the 5,000 barrels of each type of crude oil per day we can purchase. Further, we have given that that uh, we can process, mean the capacity constraint is 14,000, so the maximum we can process in every day is 14,000 barrels. Further, they are giving the information regarding, in addition, the company has the uh, option of advertising. Okay, so the option they are using, if they are using the advertisement option, they can increase their sell, uh, sales uh, by 10% barrels each day, right? Uh, so we want to finally, uh, further they have given us that it costs $4 to uh, transform a barrel of oil into a, uh, you can say gasoline. So we want to basically maximize the problem. So first of all, uh, let's formulate this model. So our CN variable is basically QOG is indicating the blending quantity of OATH crude oil, that is one, two, three types of crude oil used in GF gasoline, that is super regular and diesel. And further, we have defined a variable that was regarding the advertisement quantity of the gasoline, right? The quantity increased due to the advertisement of the GF gasoline. So further in uh, in our objective function, so this is basically the selling price of each type of gasoline minus we have the, um, you can say the purchase price uh, of, purchase per price of each type of crude oil. This is uh, the, uh, you can say minus, uh, we have the cost of uh, against each type of uh, crude oil and this is minus we are doing the uh, advertisement cost okay so this is we want to maximize it further we have uh, the constraints we have the constraint regarding the purchase cost like we can maximum uh, you can say purchase up to 5000 barrel of each type of crude oil 
So we have three types of crude oil. So for every, we have 5,000. So this is the purchase capacity constraint. Next, we have the demand constraint regarding each type of gasoline. Up to 3,000 plus, we are doing that 10 multiplied by AQ1. That is due to the advertisement if the demand is increased uh, due to the advertisement. And next we have the maximum production constraint. Okay, so we can maximum produce up to 40,000 barrels per day. These three, uh, three are regarding the octane rating constraint and these three are regarding lead content constraint that was mentioned over here that the octane rating must be greater than and lead content must be less than this one. And in the end we have a non-negativity constraint. So now I am going to implement this math model into a OPL CPLEX. How we can do that? First of all, as you know that we need to uh, develop our new project. How we can do that? We can go to file, new OPL project, and you can write down the name and where you want to store this particular project. And we for that, I used uh, run configuration in order to run the OPL model. We need model, we need data. So in model, we will write down the code and in data, we will store our data. Okay. So once we do that, uh, I use the name of project uh, EP that is branding program underscore example three. So this is the configuration that is a default name. DP is a model dot model is a model file dot data is a data file because uh, I have two types of index. One is representing O is basically representing uh, crude oil. G is representing gasoline. So that's why I have uh, named it as a, a string. So these are basically my index, okay, indices. So I am uh, defining the indices with respect to the string type of set. Okay, so this gasoline is a string type of set. As you know that these three dots are indicating, we have defined this in R. Um, and data file. So if I, we go to the data file, we can see that gasoline is equal to super, regular and diesel. And as well as the oil, uh, again, are three uh, string type uh, that is crude one, crude two and crude three. So we define the indices. The next thing we are going to define basically the data and the, for data, as I told you that we are going to use the tuple. And I, right now I'm using two types of tuple. The first type of tuple is basically I'm storing the gasoline type of data. So in gasoline type, that means for every type of gasoline that is super diesel, uh, as well as uh, the third type of diesel, uh, they, we have the demand, right? So every type of gasoline we have one, uh, the thing we need is the demand. The next, that is what is the selling price? Uh, okay, what is octane rating uh, required? What is the lead content required? Similarly, for the oil, uh, oil uh, crude oil type, what is the purchase uh, capacity? Okay, so maximum how we can purchase, what is the, you can say price, then octane as well as the lead perspective. Okay, so th these are the information we needed and these are the things that is related to the uh, gas type, okay? So regarding gasoline, we have the demand, selling price, octane rating, as well as lead, lead content. Similarly, oil, we have the purchase uh, capacity, purchase price, as well as octane rating regarding the crude oil, similarly lead. Okay, and in the end, as you can see that these are the four flow types. So we, uh, although these are the same type of, um, you can say data type, but uh, as I told you that in a tuple, you can store uh, different types of data type variables. Okay, the next thing is once we define this tuple, uh, then in order to access their uh, data, like I want to access the gas type tuple uh, demand factor. Similarly, I want to access the price factor, octane factor. Similarly, from the oil, I want to access the uh, purchase price. So for that, we need to define, so this gas type, this gas type, and then I am writing down the name that gas. Okay. Uh, then we have the array uh, starting the array that is gasoline. Gasoline is what that is basically the index. Okay. Similarly, so basically we are accessing the data of a tuple with, with the help of array. Okay. Similarly, for the oil type, we have defined oil type. 
oil than the another index okay so we define all the related data that is with respect to demand selling price often rating of the gasoline similarly d type as well okay now we want to see that how we will define the data as you can see that these three dots are indicating that we define the related data in a data file so let's see first of all the gasoline type okay so in a gasoline this is the way we can represent the data okay so we are writing down gas that is the exact name which we have written over here okay gas then we are starting the bracket and then we will use these symbols less than and greater than symbols so with the, these symbols we will define the each uh, elements value so this 3000 is basically indicating the uh, demand of first type of gasoline which is basically uh, the super Okay, as you can see that we have the demand of 3000 for the super, right? Similarly, we are writing down the demand of next type of uh, oil, which is basically the regular. Similarly, 1000 for the diesel. This is for 1000 the diesel. So this is the demand for each type of gasoline. Next, we are writing down the price of each type of gasoline. So this is regarding super, this is regarding regular, this is regarding diesel. Next, we are writing down the opt-in rating. So this is regarding super, diesel, uh, regular as well as diesel and so on. Similarly, we have written down the data with respect to oil. Okay, that is the purchase capacity. So that means the first values are the capacities with respect to the crude oil, right? Similarly, the next thing we are writing down with respect to the price. Okay, once we have defined the data, next we need to define that is basically indicating the maximum production, which was given that we can maximum produce 14,000, right? So for that, I have defined the maximum production, which is equal to 14,000. And lastly, I am defining the data with respect to product cost and that product cost is for the processing of the uh, gasoline is $4, okay? So we have defined the uh, a production cost as well. Not the product cost, it's a production cost that is four. Okay, so once we define the indices, we define the, uh, you can say data. Now we need, uh, need to define the decision variables. So D word, that is a, uh, you can say key in order to define the decision variable, that is D word, that is a decision variable. We are indicating float plus as I told you in the previous video as well. The plus is indicating that uh, it can be any fractional value, but it should be positive. Okay, so that is basically the regarding the advertisement of the gasoline. And the next we are indicating the blending variable, which is uh, QOG, right? So this is basically the blending uh, variable, quantity of the blending variable, this is advertisement of each type of gasoline that is basically we are defining these two decision variables now we are going to define uh, the objective function we want to maximize the profit and some against gasoline some against oil so this is we are indicating that is no no you can see how we can access a particular data that is basically from the gasoline we need price minus oil we need price and we need production cost so how we are accessing uh, this particular uh, price we are indicating so this type of people we can access with respect to gas right so that's why we are writing down gas in bracket we will write down g that is basically the index okay so g in gasoline so this is basically the index which is this one then we will write down dot as you will write down the dot you can access the particular type of data type so dot i we are accessing the price so this is price similarly from the oil that is basically the oil type that is oil from the oil we are accessing the price of the crude oil type minus production cost right that's the production cost multiplied by the blending variable so this is basically the uh, you can say the overall um, uh, 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 regarding the profit we have basically the yeah, price uh, minus production cost and in the end we have the advertisement of the gasoline cost right okay so this is my overall objective function we want to maximize the 
profit. Next, we have uh, the constraint. The first constraint, as I shown you earlier, that was regarding the purchase capacity constraint of each type of crude oil. So this is basically how we are writing down for every crude oil, the mean for every type of crude oil. So the blending quantity must be less than or equal to the purchase uh, capacity. Again, we are accessing oil, uh, then array dot purchase capacity. Next, we are writing down the demand constraint. As you can see that this is the demand constraint. Okay, so how we are writing down for every gasoline sum over O in oils that is basically the blending quantity must be equal to the uh, demand plus the advertisement, right? So right now I am over here. It could be better to write down equal if you want to fulfill exactly. But if you want to write down less than or equal, so it's up to you that mean it could be equal or less. Then in the end we are writing down the production constraint. Okay, so that is this is the maximum production constraint that quantity cannot be more than the maximum allowed production. And we have uh, next we have the opt-in rating constraint. So this is the opt-in rating constraints, right? That is basically for every gasoline the sum must be fulfill this constraint. And in the end we have the lead content constraint. So once we have written down. Uh, those cons uh, constraints. Uh, I'm not explaining in detail the constraint that due to because we have already discussed in our previous videos. So if you haven't watched those videos, you can go over there and to check how we can define these constraints using for all as well as the sum function. So now once we have written down the uh, complete model as well as we have defined the data, now we need to run this model. So we can drag and drop the model as well as the data in a configuration, right click, run this. Okay, right now, OPL start solving this problem. So as you can see that right now it's solving, yes. Now we got the solutions. Over here, the objective is that is the maximum profit. And these are the answer of the decision variable, which you can also check in our solution tab. So this is the optimum objective function right now the status is optimum this is uh, indicating uh, the blending quantity of uh, using crude oil one of the super this is indicating uh, the uh, using crude oil one of uh, the next that is i think so regular as well as diesel so this is indicating the production quantities as well as this is indicating uh, we are doing the advertisement only for the regular type of gasoline not for the others we are doing the advertisement so these are the quantities answer uh, similarly you can see the statistics the objective function answer the number of constraints the number of variables and so on so thank you so much i hope you understand how we can use the tuple uh, to declare the data of the linear programming problem and solve the linear programming model using OPLC plex Thank you so much. See you in the next week.